In this lesson, we will be differentiating between volume ventilation and pressure ventilation. So with volume ventilation, there is going to be a preset tidal volume that is ordered by the physician. And when we put that preset volume into that ventilator, the ventilator will push the same tidal volume in each and every breath. The tidal volume will not change. So the ventilator pushes flow until the preset volume is reached. What does change with this type of ventilation is the peak inspiratory pressure, and it will vary with changes in compliance and or airway resistance. Now, this is a great mode of ventilation because if we have a preset tidal volume and a preset rate, that gives us a consistent minute volume which removes CO2 adequately. Also, we can easily identify changes in the peak inspiratory pressure. The bad thing about this mode is that that PIP can dramatically increase when compliance decreases or airway resistance increases. And if that happens, there's a higher likelihood of ventilator-induced lung injury. This afternoon, we are filming a two video series to show the difference between volume ventilation and pressure ventilation. So we're going to start with volume ventilation first. Um, I know we've got a lot of stuff going on on the ventilator screen right now. I'm going to show you specifically what I want you to look at. I don't want you to get lost in everything else. Don't worry, that will come later. But right now, here's what you need to be focusing on. This bottom row. It's where I set the ventilator settings. And the only thing that matters right now is that I have a tidal volume of 0.5 liters set, okay? So I also have a respiratory rate of 10 and a flow of 50, which means I'm pushing that 500 milliliters in every six seconds at a speed of 50 liters per minute. But right now we're focusing on this tidal volume. The vertical rectangles here are real-time feedback. So I have 500 mLs of tidal volume or 0.5 liters. And so 0.5 liters is being pushed in on inspiration and 0.5 liters is coming back from the patient to the machine. So what we're pushing in is coming back out on exhalation, which is the way we want it. And it is taking a peak inspiratory pressure of 10 centimeters of water pressure to do that. I've got the lung compliance uh, set normally and airway resistance set normally. So basically I have a normal patient. All right. So we are pushing 500 in, 500 coming out, taking a peak pressure of 10 centimeters of water pressure. Also, if you want to look with our graphics display, I'm pushing 500 mLs in, it's coming out on exhalation and it's taking a peak inspiratory pressure of about 10 for that volume to be pushed in. Okay. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to change the compliance of the lung. I am going to decrease lung compliance, which means I'm making the lung stiffer. Okay, and as I do that, see, look right here. See how that pressure has increased? So that's your visual. But you can still see with a decrease in compliance, we're pushing that same tidal volume in. And the peak pressures have increased to do so because it takes more pressure to drive the same tidal volume into a stiffer lung. All right. I'm going to put our compliance back down to normal. And now what I'm going to do is change airway resistance. I'm going to put a resistor in that is a smaller hole. Basically what I'm going to do is uh, simulate a bronchospasm, just a mild bronchospasm, okay? So our compliance is normal. Right now airway resistance is normal. We're pushing 500 in, close to 500 is coming back out, and it's taking 10 centimeters of water pressure to do so. 
So let's change. All right. All right, so here's what we're looking at now. So we're pushing 500 mLs of tidal volume in. Still pushing that same 500 in, still getting pretty much that same 500 mLs of tidal volume back out. And now it's taking a pressure of 17 to do it because when the airway is smaller, it takes more pressure to push that volume past a smaller opening. So this is how volume control works or volume modes of ventilation. We set the tidal volume. That tidal volume does not change, but what changes is the peak inspiratory pressure and changes in compliance and airway resistance will fluctuate those peak pressures. All right, stay tuned. We're about to shoot a video for pressure ventilation. In pressure ventilation, the peak inspiratory pressure is ordered by the physician and set on the ventilator. So it's important to remember in this type of ventilation, that peak inspiratory pressure is set and it will not change. The ventilator will apply positive pressure until a preset pressure limit is reached. The tidal volume, however, will change. It will increase or decrease with changes in compliance and or airway resistance. Now, the advantage of this type of ventilation is the peak pressures and therefore the alveolar pressures are maintained at a constant level. So there's not a lot of, uh, there's not as much chance of barotrauma happening. The disadvantages, however, is because tidal volume will vary. That changes minute volume, which will change CO2 removal. So you'll have blood gas value alterations. So with this video, we're going to talk about pressure ventilation. So right now, the machine is in a pressure mode of ventilation. I know that it says there right at the top, pressure assist control. Again, the circles at the bottom are where I've set my settings. I have a rate of 10. I have a set pressure because in pressure ventilation, we set the inspiratory pressure or the PIP and it won't change. So I have a peak pressure set of 10 and I'm going to hold that pressure in the lungs for one second and then allow the patient to exhale. All right, so these are our settings. We set the PIP. It doesn't change, right? When we look at our feedback along the side, you can see for that set 10 centimeters of water pressure, and this is where we're going to read the peak pressure. I know I have it set at 10, it's reading 11. That's okay, it's just a minute difference. But we have the pressure set, okay, 10 centimeters of water pressure, and when that 10 centimeters of water pressure is set, it is delivering 560 mLs or 0.56 liters of tidal volume. 560 uh, milliliters is going in, 550 is coming out, okay? So we set the pressure, it won't change, but what will change is the volume, okay? So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decrease the compliance. I'm gonna make the alveoli stiffer. And if you look at these graphics, you can see my pressure didn't change, see? But look at tidal volume. See how tidal volume decreased? All right, if we look at the numbers, we still have that same 10 centimeters of water pressure set. So it's delivering 10, I know it says 11. It's close enough to 10. We have this set. And look at our tidal volumes now. So when the lung got stiffer, the machine couldn't move as much volume per unit of pressure. So when we set the pressure and the lungs get stiffer, tidal volume decreases. Okay? Now I'm going to put my tidal or my compliance back to normal. And 
and our volume should go back up yeah, pretty close to what they were a while ago, right? All right, so now I have normal compliance, normal airway resistance, and I'm going to simulate a mild bronchospasm, okay? We're going to make the airway smaller. We're going to increase airway resistance. The vent kind of has to adjust itself with this, so give it just a few minutes. I'll tell you when to look. Okay, now we've got good readings. So I've simulated a slight bronchospasm. You can see we're still delivering the same pressure. See how the pressure is the same? But tidal volume has decreased, okay? Because a vent goes to push, it only pushes that set pressure, and for that pressure, not as much volume is being moved into the lungs because the airway is smaller. All right, so pressure ventilation, we set the peak inspiratory pressure. It does not change, but what changes is the tidal volume, and that changes in response to lung compliance and airway resistance. So pressure ventilation and volume ventilation, get it straight right off the bat because when we start talking about modes of ventilation, we have different modes to operate in volume ventilation and different modes to operate in pressure ventilation. See you soon.